Hello! If you're watching this and you think this seems familiar, that's because this is from a highlight video from a stream that I did recapping Valorant Champions and talking about my top 10 teams of 2021. This video focuses on the three stories that I wanted to talk about coming from Champions in a nice sliced up and cleaned up way for a video. If you want to watch the full VOD links in the description, and I'll also be doing a highlight video for the top 10 teams from 2021 that I talk about in the live stream later on. If you want to see that, or you just want to join the conversation live, or you're just a goon, I guess, subscribe. It's free, it's easy, you get cool Valorant Esports videos in your subscribe box like once a week, and you get to see when I'm live on YouTube if you want to come and join and chat shit about Valorant. While I'm here, I'll also say that I have a Twitter you can follow and a Discord with a bunch of people just talking Valorant and other esports. I love seeing new people join the community. Anyways, thank you. Let's get on with the video. All right, champions. We've all watched it. We all loved it. Pretty good. Um, let's go into some of the details. What I've decided to do. Actually, before we get into that, here is the results. The bracket. Winner side, like top, the top side of bracket. You had ascend and liquid kind of clean up, and then you had ascend clean up liquid. It's pretty easy. Two o two o two o. But on the bottom side, you had Gambit versus X10. X10 taking a game. I think like the first game. But then they got absolutely fucking dominated. They got dummied. And crew beat Fnatic. Fnatic looking, taking first seed in their pool. Um, beating Cloud9 Blue and beating Vision Strikers. And looking pretty dominant. And so I was like, damn, like, do we underestimate crew? And then, or sorry, do we underestimate Fnatic? But then crew slapped them up. 2-1. And another, like... Pretty crazy upset. Like, no one saw that coming. And they go to play Gambit. Even I was like, come on, they can't be Gambit. And it was so close. What was it? Like, quintuple overtime? Like, sec septuple overtime? Like, it was 18-16 it was for Gambit in map three. Crew did an amazing job in the tournament. Placing, tying third overall with Liquid. And only losing to Gambit, who is very, very good. For a team that had not had never beaten a North American or EU team before, like mostly relegated to the best of the rest. For them to take so many names and to almost make it to grand finals in the biggest tournament of the year, pretty crazy. Gambit went on to play Ascend, in which Ascend won, which like it looked, it was really close. I thought Gambit had it when they had their Icebox match. But when Ascend won that, I was like, damn. But they won their, their match against Gambit and Ascend winning the tournament. Does that make them the best team in the world? It's very messy. The way I'm gonna talk about champions is I've broken it down into three stories that I wanna talk about, right? There's definitely way more stories that I will talk about, uh, or I wanna talk about and will talk about in the next upcoming like few days or videos or things. First thing I wanna talk about is actually what happened between NA versus EU. NA versus EU was looking like a very, very tight battle, right? Everyone was like, oh shit, who's gonna win? NA is pretty good. Like. EU is also pretty good, and they go into the first Masters 2 event, the first international land, and North America kind of, like, I don't want to say slaps them up, but it was looking real good, right? You had Sentinels, clear winners, didn't drop a game the whole tournament. They beat, never played Liquid, but they beat Fnatic 3-0. Um, version 1 beat Liquid, and then Fnatic beat version 1. It was looking like NA was, had the scales tipped to their side, right? Then when you go into Berlin, the next tournament, right? It's looking not as good, right? You look at it and you're like, oh shit. Like, Sentinels fell out early. Envy, second place, not bad. 100 Thieves, what the fuck is this? Ah, banger. Anyways, so Masters 3 Berlin, we have to dissect it even closer, because again, this is that sort of, they're almost on level playing field because you have Gambit who won, awesome. And you had Sentinels who was previously number one, fifth, bottom, only doing worse than Supermassive Blaze, losing to Envy. But then you look at the, the, the shit, you look at the head to heads, right? You had a hundred thieves dummy up Ascend. They beat Gambit, the presumably two top teams of uh, of EU. G2 beat Sentinels. It's like, it's, it's everyone's trading each other out. And so I think that after Masters, or after uh, Masters 3, I was kind of like, all right, the scales are kind of back even. What, whatever happens in champion is gonna like determine who is like the next top, right? Then we got a champions man. And we got the champions. And EU proved themselves at the champions. And it wasn't even just like, they had a couple of good teams that did well. They looked like clear and ahead, the best region, the best teams. Even though for sure, Envy didn't have a good day there. Sentinels didn't have a good day there. 
Glad I had Blue had a pretty good day there. I'm not gonna lie. Gambit honestly didn't look very good during the first like three days of the tournament, and even like the first like few days. All their matches were playing against like not the best teams, and they were going down to the wire. But Gambit stayed in there, clutched up, and then did what they had to do. Same with Ascend. Four and O in the head-to-head, -head, right? God damn, we have to really reconsider how we look at this NA versus EU battle. Of course, this is just one tournament, but this is the tournament you have to prove yourself for. So I think uh, EU doing so well, I think EU is the best region in the world. For sure, by far. I think there's like a there's a gap. Not just because they did well in this tournament, they did well in the last tournament, but I think the quality of teams in EU are higher on average. North America has some great teams, right? They have Sentinels who I still rate incredibly highly to, despite their like, his poor performance they still got it down to the wire against liquid right who liquid was looking absurdly good game three like last last rounds and they lost it even so i think that sentinels is like still very a very very high rated team north america's second best envies like they did well last tournament but like they didn't play well this tournament and they got shat on cloud nine blue uh they're got, got the new fit for like fresh fresh fade up so they're kind of looking good but we'll see how they do in the future we'll talk about that later again 100 thieves who just dropped half their roster x set who's looking pretty good but couldn't close it out against so, like other people and a lot of north america is kind of like not as consistent as like the top emea teams you have gambit you have ascend you have liquid you have fanatic you have g2 you have big you have navi who's pretty good but they're dropping players you have Better teams, on average, in North America. There, ergo, he was better. And I'll actually go into that more with the second story I'm going to talk about here. The regional rankings. These are my personal regional rankings of how I rank uh, the major regions, at least. Uh, I didn't really touch on Oceania. Or I also combined EU and CIS. I know a lot of people differentiate them, but I put them on the same caliber anyways. What I have is I have EU, of course, cut above the rest. Then the next category, I was talking to my Discord about this a little bit more. There's like a, a bigger breakdown between how this all works. I'll explain why it's in this sort of A plus, A minus, and nothing else is. A plus, North America, SEA, and A minus, LATAM, Korea. I rate SEA so highly because I think they have a higher, they have about the same average level as North America, if that makes any sense. Their average team is at the same level as north america because like north american teams who do you have right if you had 100 thieves sentinels nv cloud nine blue x set all competing at like top top levels then they'd be in the same as eu but every like showing we've had teams that just have not been good or have not been like performing to their best right i think sea definitely outperformed this tournament and like whether it's going to stay for next year is questionable um i don't think na has fallen off that hard maybe that's just the na copium but like sea overall did a good job with uh secret next Gen, both making it to bracket which cannot be said by sentinels or envy even though they did have each respectively had like hard brackets to get in but like en envy lost to team secret i think or x10 they lost to x10 right x10 beat envy beat vivo keyed and made it a bracket losing to gambit 2-1 that's pretty good. I think SE has, I don't know, their teams, I, I, it's really hard to describe how their teams work and what makes them so special, but it works. So, I mean, like, hey, power to them. As for putting LATAM in Korea, A-, um, I put them a little bit lower, even though I think, I do think Crew and Vision Strikers are better than some of the respective NA and SEA teams. I think that just having them as the dominating force in their region doesn't necessarily make them like the best region, but it definitely gives them an era of, give them the, like some benefit of the doubt, right? Because I guess we haven't really seen the number two LATAM team, like a Strahls play. I kind of want to see a Strahls play a lot internationally. They just lost to Furia. Other Latin American teams, like Chilean teams, um, a Strahls crew are very, very good. I think they are better than the just the Brazilian teams. But we'll see how that works in the future. Having one leader of a region, I think, doesn't mean that the region's good. But I also think that they are still better than Brazil and Japan. Brazil's in B tier. So B, Brazil, of course. They had, like, an almost good performance. They're not the worst region, because they're better than Japan. But Brazil definitely needs some work. Um, even with their super team, Vivo Keed, they couldn't top off the, right, the, the best teams. They almost beat Ascend. 
Brazil, outside of that, has not had a crazy great performance, even with like putting their best players on the best teams, right? I think they have, they have, they can make it to the next level because they have, they do have some real good players. I think they need to work on strategy a lot. I think if if other teams were to play like Crew, I think Crew kind of proved that if you play right, you don't need to necessarily have a crazy good player, and which they actually do a crazy good player. That's kind of what set them over, but. The foundation of having a strong team game is just as strong or stronger than just having good players. And in C, I put Japan. Or Japan. Japan got its own ass region. Uh, and they're not very good. They don't have like a big foundation in in like shooter games. I'm sure they have some good players. Munchkin, Fisker. Munchkin's actually Korean, I'm pretty sure. But Fisker is pretty good. They're just very clearly not at the same playing at the same level. And sure, Crazy Raccoons had its moments. Took a game off Gambit, but not great. Uh, Munchkin just left Crazy Raccoons. Crazy Raccoons was the, the de facto best Japanese team, and even he was like, "Yo, this is not, <laughs> this is not chilling. Like, this is we. I need to, like look, look for new options and try to get better." And even Norception did well in the the, the close bracket, the APAC uh, close bracket, but couldn't top it off. I don't know. Japan really needs some work, but I I think that like. The Japanese region can definitely improve. I don't know if they can pop up to EU levels or even a, like A levels, but they can they can bump up to like Brazilian levels. I think they're on their way there. As for you asking about the glitch cam, glitch cam, I, the using the glitch cam, I think should be banned. Of course, I think like it's not a great thing. How Valorant handled it was kind of dumb. Where they're like, well, they used it on six rounds, or they I'm not sure if they used it on six rounds or they won on six rounds where they used it. I'll have to double check that. They use it on six rounds, and then they're like, six rounds plus the economy damage rating for a seventh round, therefore they win. That was like such a dumb argument. And then they reverted it up again to they play the last match. They should have just played the last match from the beginning, saying, start playing from half or maybe give them a couple rounds. I think giving them seven rounds is a little weird. That's the game, I think. I think that Ride did their best they could. I think I'm glad they didn't just stick with their original answer, but I think that it's definitely getting better now. Anyways, that is the second story. On to the final story, which I want to talk about. Boom. Who is the best player of the tournament? Which actually, I'm gonna get back to that one. I'm gonna start with this one. I've picked four players from this tournament who did so insanely well. And I think that they're not the typical people you, you think of. I think Scream did very well. I think Tens did all right. I think Ye did all right. But I think these four players like made the difference in their in their matches. So first talk about Leaf. They ended up Platinum Blue, placed uh, fifth, lost in the first round to um, Liquid. But Leaf really, really proved himself that he he's going to be one of the best players in the world in like the next year or two. I think 2020, I'm not gonna lie, is like the year of the of the Leaf. Because Leaf is good. Lost to Fnatic, but beat Vision Strikers in full sense. Look, let's look at their matches though. Um, because this happens, Leaf. Leaf has high highs and low lows. And so I think this is a low low for Leaf. Even though he didn't do like terribly, he did get reverse minus 12, minus 10. That just means he literally just got outfragged by Durka. But that's Leaf at his worst, is that he's still second frag on his team. Against full sense, what happened? Boom. Leaf, plus 15, plus 5. Top frag. You look at their match against Vision Strikers. The double double. He got in plus minus and first kill, first deaths, and also actual kills and deaths, which is insanely hard to do in, in like best of threes at any level, right? So for him to do it against one of the best teams in the world, Vision Strikers, insane, insane stuff from Leaf. His match against uh, Team Liquid, look, again, plus 17, plus seven first kill, first deaths, only matched by Scream himself. So he's on his way up, but I think that like, you know, he has some work to do because he still has some shit games. Next, Kesnet. Kesnet, I'm not gonna lie, I was not a Kesnet believer going to the tournament. People are like, oh, Kesnet, the next symbol. I, I thought that was like a meme or something. He joined Crew just before uh, the beginning of the tournament and he did well. Crew before, I think, didn't have like a star player. They were more known for their really good teamwork. But with the introduction of Kesnet onto their roster, it kind of popped off. Let's go over again their stuff. Yeah, at first I was like, Kesnet kind of getting dummied. 
Like, Mazino's pretty good. Nag's pretty good. Their whole team's pretty good. But I was like, Kesnet did all right. Furia. All right, not bad. Kesnet, sure, he dropped 22. But it was like, it's Furia. They kind of shot the bet over here. Then you go Sentinels. In their game against Sentinels, Kesnet overall outfrags in terms of first kill, first deaths. Not bad against one of the best teams in the world. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure, yeah. In their game against Split, he is the reason why they won. He had so many clutches. He was the closer against Sentinels, who's usually like, you know, it's a very, very good team. Then you go to their next match against Fnatic. And you're like, holy balls. Plus 23, plus 7. His whole team definitely struggled against Fnatic, but he just fucking kept chugging along. Icebox, he got a 6k. Bit of a defense already. Flank is being watched by Mystic. Shotgun comes to you. The Raz on to Durka as well. But Kesnit just is able to mow him down. They're sitting ducks. They can't find any room to breathe. As Kesnit says, you didn't get the ace, Durka, but baby, I did. Oh. I don't even know what the fuck happened there. And of course, close it out against them on split. Clean them up. Him, it's not only him that won them these matches, but he is like a very strong fragger on the team and definitely made the big difference. Him and Klaus, I think. Next, Chronicle. Chronicle from, do you have any good impressions of any Valorant players or commentators? Michael, you don't watch Valorant. I know this. Hey, my name's Chronicle. That's my Chronicle impression. This guy made the difference for Gambit, because again, Gambit struggled a lot um, through this tournament. Every single game they played to, like, it came down to the last game. Like, every single game they played. Chronicle was the one who, like, anchored them. Usually, like, last year, it was Nats that was, like, the big difference maker. And this time, it was uh, Chronicle. I think at the beginning of the tournament, he's, like, doing all right. Watching him. Plus 12, not bad. 13 out him there. Plus four, Nats keeping it easy. We're used to seeing Nats doing like doing the damage, but when they got into the actual playoff brackets, these were supposed to kick in, right? The Chronicle difference, plus 16 overall, right? Game it one map three, Defo, Shade Loss, cool. Sent, excellent one that, Chronicle, only one doing all right. Then Breeze, Chronicle, plus 10 overall. Chronicle really kicked in the gear when they were against Crew. Literally, look at this, look at this, look at this. Look at this. Minus 11 from Shados, minus 4 from, from Nats, who we usually are known for doing well. Chronicle, plus 23, plus 8. Uh, they crushed Breeze, of course, because they have a really good Breeze. Like, insane Breeze. Um, Chronicle, killed it. Ascent, not really well, but Crew took that one. Fine. Chronicle literally won them the game. He clutched up so many times. So many times. See that they're very scared of that operator. Why wouldn't you be? Chronicle playing behind the smoke, and there's the opening. As they come around the corner, they're not oh, expecting what to is still that? be aggressive. And he's gonna what? get all five. When you go to this many overtimes, I think like you have to like the clutchness from Chronicle and also Nats doing a good job like anchoring. Nats is usually the anchor for the team, but I think in this tournament, Chronicle get over. Everyone's had like a poor performance in this tournament out of like Defo, Nats, Redgar, Shados. But Chronicle's the one dude who just like kept it in and being like, all right, boys. Like he's he was the actual anchor for the team. That's what I'm saying. He was one of the big difference makers for the tournament. All right. The last best player I want to talk about. Starkso. Strixo. I don't know how to actually pronounce his name. I say Strixo. He was looking very good this tournament. At first, I was like, ah, CNET. Ascend's win condition for winning this tournament was not having to rely on CNED for everything. Because leading up to this tournament, they were relying on CNED for everything. Like, really hard. But I think a lot of players stepped it up on Ascend, the most of which being Strixo. Um, let's go over his stats real quick. Team Liquid. Who is this on top? Team Liquid was one of the, like, the favorite going in. Probably, like, them or Sentinels, maybe Gambit. Ascend was not... In my mind, not really looking at it as the team that was like looking to take it. But with this absolutely dominant performance, that's pretty good. Second frag on bind, top frag on split, top frag on uh, there's no ascent. Still, cleaning them up, cleaning up house. Scream again, still looking like one of the best players in the world. But Strixo being able to compete with that, dropping plus minus on split, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. This is where he came came into play. I think a lot of players stepped it up in this match against Gambit, and that's what won them 
The things over kill us. I don't think kill us is very good, not gonna lie. Um, not bad. Bone cold, nice job, but Trixo right up there. Fracture, Strixo doing his best to keep it in there, but it's kind of a wash. Icebox. Now, Zeke stepped up on this map specifically, but Strixo right up next to him. I think their constant performance uh, of, like, keeping up with the ability of CNED is what, like, lent them to win the next game, right? CNED, again, came in strong, but Strixo right on side him. I think CNED, there's a couple games I can't really point out where. Um, that Cena was just dropping, and I think that that's when these other players really stepped it up and won them the matches they needed to win. Kind of showing that just Cena isn't the best player on that team, right? Overall, pretty good tournament from the Ascend boys. Um, Starkso, Starkso, really Starkso? I always thought it's Strixo. Starkso, yeah, I've been saying, I mean, I said, I'm just looking at a chat now, you're just saying Starkso everywhere. Um, but Strixo sounds so much cooler, sounds like that is it for Valorant Champions. Um, I kind of went on some tangents, but uh, we, we, we capped it off. I think that overall the tournament was pretty good. I think that um, with all the NA teams losing out, except for Cloud9 Blue, who they lost in the first round, was really tough for an NA fan. But I think that um, the storylines of Crew and Gambit really helped for the whole tournament. Whereas like you could, Crew was just going on this dangerous run. Uh, the, the the Latin American boys fucking literally there was a cr there's videos of just like crowds of people within that giant ass crew stadium in uh, in Chile and just thousands of people just sitting around fucking cheering on these boys that's so sick I love seeing things like that because it really adds like to the, the the depth of the game more than just like oh it's North America and EU which if all the teams were to make it um, from North America and EU as projected you would have had one other person which would have just been, I don't know, probably Vision Strikers. So, it's really great to see them. Overall, good tournament. Happy.